friends. Hello, hello. It is so good to be with you this morning. Uh, whether you are worshiping here in this place or have jo are joining us online, a couple of things that we've got going on I want to lift up in front of you before we jump into worship. Um, in your bulletins, you'll see in our mission middle that we have dates for Camp S'more. Yay! Um, so those things are, we are set. We are going to be recruiting for various roles. Uh, various things. Um, so keep an eye out in your emails and in your bulletins, in those pastor notes, and in all the things. So um, that's very exciting. It's one of the things that we look forward to every summer, and it's always awesome. And so I wanted to lift that up before you. Also, uh, today is a fifth Sunday, and so that means we have a couple of things happening. Um, any of our um, Young disciples who are here will be engaging in a service project with Miss Kelly, um, so that's awesome. It's also a mission giving Sunday, and so our fifth Sunday mission um, this year is the Wesley Foundation at the University of Cincinnati. And so, oh wait, woo! <laughs> um, so um, that is a pretty awesome ministry. There's Wesley House, and then there's Riddle House. It's so it provides housing. Um, for college students who are looking for uh, ways to learn how to live in community, but it's also a safe place for students to explore their faith, uh, maybe take it apart, put it back together, uh, make it stronger, make it their own. Um, it's a great community, and um, I am part of the board for that, um, but Jeff is part of programming, and so if you have any questions, uh, make sure you let us know. We can do our best to answer or get the answers for you, uh, but that's something for sure that you want to support. And also, today is um, something that we're going to start doing pretty regularly. If you are interested in joining the church, um, or if you're looking at baptism, or you are thinking about confirmation, today we're having pizza with the pastor at 5 o'clock um, down in the um, Kickback Cafe. And um, come and explore. You can ask some questions. We'll have answers for you. Depending on the weather, it might be me and Pastor Jason. Um, you know, because he's a baseball coach, too. And so um, right now, you might just be stuck with me, but you might get both of us. So questions about membership, baptism, or confirmation, come. Hopefully, we will answer those questions. If it doesn't work with your schedule and you still have those questions, um, make sure you connect with me, and I will get those questions answered. I will make sure that, that you have all the knowledge that you need to make good, good faith decisions. So wanted to lift all of those things up before you. Tonight we have a really big youth gathering, um, district uh, youth groups from all over coming in, um, so it's really going to be a lot of fun. Uh, also pray for our youth leaders, because there's going to be a lot of kids, a lot of teenagers in the house tonight, right? Yeah, it should be. You're totally yeah. stoked, aren't you? Oh gosh, yeah. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, so. <sighs> Everything else is in the bulletin. You can read it, you can check it out, just not during the service. Let's pray, friends. God, you are so good. So, so good. And we are so grateful. Lord, we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and those of us who are gathered at home or on the road, those who are watching now or maybe even later on. Just fill us with your spirit, Lord. Help us to remember that you are with us always, that you've got us, that you are taking care of us. We are never, ever alone, that you can handle our questions, you can handle our anger, that you are in this with us. Fill us with your spirit as we worship, as we sing, as we pray, as we praise, as we lament, as we question. Help us, Lord, to feel your presence, to know your presence, and to share you everywhere we go. God, we love you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Friends. Is that me? I think we're good. Uh, it is good to see you. I want to invite you to stand with us as we sing together, as we worship this morning. Uh, let's sing, Yes, I Will.
I count on one thing The same God that never fails Will not fail me now and Won't fail me now In the waiting The same God who's never late Is working all things out Is working all things out Oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. And yes, I will bless your name. Oh yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy in all my days. Oh yes, I will. fails, will not fail me now, won't fail me now, in no way, the same God who's never late, is working all things out, is working all things out, oh yes, I will lift you high, in the lowest valley, Bless your name, oh yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy in all my days, oh yes, I will for all my days, oh yes, I will, I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the Who's coming up here with me? Are you coming, boys? <laughs> Come on. Oh, do you have volleyball today? Yeah. I know. S soggy, soggy field. That is the season for that. Yeah. All right. So I brought somebody for us today. I don't know if you've ever met him. Let me get him out. He's not really shy. All right, here he comes. I literally am a huge person and he's just a shadow. Yeah, you just saw a shadow? Yeah, I didn't. Oh, look who it is. You know him? Who is that? Yeah. Who is it? Oh, there goes Trey. What? Where's his nose? Everybody notices he's missing a nose. <laughs> yeah, he, he started out with a bad day. Yeah. 
Have you ever, like, your nose keeps running that you think to yourself, oh, I wish I could just get rid of my nose? Well, apparently Mr. Potato Head did just that. Yeah. Yeah. It's Mr. Potato Head. Do you know him? You think so? Um, Mr. Potato Head's been around for a long, long time. I don't have a date for you like I did on that book that day, mostly because it makes me very sad to know, <laughs> to know I'm very experienced. But in any case, so um, Mr. Potato Head has had lots of forms. There's the original Mr. Potato Head. This is the Toy Story Mr. Potato Head, which our Skyward teachers let me borrow, which is nice of them. Nineteen seventy two or nineteen seventy four. Has anybody got an opportunity to look on the World Wide Web and see if Teddy is correct? Um, that's our guest. Miss Chrissy's on Miss Chrissy's on it, all right. So um, yeah, he was he's been Darth Vader, he's been Toy Story, I've heard he's been a football player. I mean Mr. Potato Head has wears a lot of hats, but I'm bump. Um, so today I'm gonna tell a story about Mr. Potato Head. 1925. I'm not I'm I'm thinking what? 53? 1953, everyone. No, I actually meant I meant to say 25 years, 25 years, 25 years. Wait a minute. Anyway, let's talk about Mr. Potato Head. See, it's really easy to get Miss Kelly off track. Okay, so wait, Teddy. So Mr. Potato Head gets up one morning and he decides he's going for a walk, all right? So he's out on a walk. It's a nice morning like this, a little crisp, a little too crisp for April, God, if you're listening to me. Um, but he goes for a walk and as he's walking along, the wind comes along. Boom, there goes the hat. Off into the wind, hat is gone. Oh. It was his favorite hat. Plus, it clearly kept his head warm. And so there went the hat. Oh. But is he still Mr. Potato Head? Yeah. God created him. He's still Mr. Potato Head with or without the hat. So he continues on his walk. Right? He's going along, and just out of, out of nowhere, all of a sudden, these guys jump out, and they steal his shoes. Oh, I know, Emberly. What? In one day? Maybe it's because he was sticking his tongue out at him. I don't know. Everybody seems against him. You're right. And I wonder if he's even thinking God might be against him at this point. First, the hat, his favorite hat. Stop, stop. I'm sorry. I know, it's hard. Oh, a different one? Well, maybe he's not. Maybe he decides that, okay, I have more shoes at home. So this is my favorite part of my little story. Mr. Potato Head continues on his walk. <laughs> Get it? So he continues on his walk, and due to no, like, fault of his own, all of a sudden, he loses an arm and he can't see. I mean... I probably would have gone home and gone to bed after someone jumped me and took my shoes, right? But Mr. Potato Head was having a really good attitude about it. He was still Mr. Potato Head. He knew God still loved him, but he kept on, and now, now he can't see. His arm is useless. I mean, what do you think he's thinking now? God, where are you? I mean, are you, have you deserted me, God? This is the worst day ever. What? My dreams are smashed? Yeah? Like everything I was planning to do today has been destroyed. It's been absolutely awful. Who tried to do it? Who? I don't. He just, no fault of his own, he went blind. What about his tongue? Yeah. Well, uh, someone, okay. Like chainsaw out his tongue. I'm, I'm open to anything. But you know what? Here's the thing. He's still Mr. Potato Head. God still made him, right? Well, oh, he still is something that looks like a head. He's, well, I don't know. Look, he's still, you know, I know a lot of people who can't see and don't have an arm and they're not dead. So I think, I think that we all have days like Mr. Potato Head has. 
or maybe I a, my or, <laughs> or maybe, okay, I all right. Maybe a day where you just get up on the wrong side and you really wanted to play outside, but it's rainy. You really want to go to your soccer game, but the field's flooded. Or you really wanted to have mac and cheese for dinner, but your mom said, no, we can't have mac and cheese for the fourth time this week. We've all had some days like that, right? And we all wonder, oh, God, where are you? Why are these bad things happening to me? And you know what? I think God wants us to ask him. He wants us to ask these questions. Where are you? Why do I feel alone? Why did someone take my, my shoes? Did they need the shoes more than I needed the shoes? Right? Why can't I see anymore? Right. Why can't I see anymore? We have days like that. People around us have days like that, but it doesn't change who we are. Right? We're still God's creations, and he wants us to ask him the questions. He he wants us to talk to him because that's how he knows, that's how he knows that we're paying attention. And if we're asking him the questions, we're also waiting on him for the answers and nobody else. Because the world's going to try to tell you why he lost his eyes or why somebody took his shoes, right, or why it's windy. Okay, the world's going to try to tell you that, but we need to ask God. And we need to wait for his answer. That means we've got to listen. Right? That's kind of hard. Right? The waiting and the listening part. But he wants us to ask. Oh, okay. All right. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Get the tickle by the stone. Hang on. Let me go. I'm coming to you. Well, because I think God, how can he ask God if he doesn't have a mouth anymore? His mind. Right? I think God hears even our silent prayers and from our hearts, right? God lives inside of us, so I think he already knows that we're sad and we're questioning. Um, lamenting is a big word for that, right? So I don't think he needs a mouth to talk to God and ask him. Okay, Teddy. Is this a story or a question? A comment. <laughs> this is a comment. God is everywhere. That's what you wanted to tell me? Yes, Trip. <laughs> we'll be with you shortly. <laughs> Trip, yes. We got we got a big project to do downstairs, and I mean big. By by big I mean really big. Yes. God can't control everyone and he's 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 in charge of that. I do and yes. Wasps. Wasps are hostile. And my Wasps are hostile. All right, let's pray and we will continue this downstairs. Okay. Thank you, Lord, for my job. All right, here we go. Here we go. We're gonna pray. We're gonna pray. We're gonna pray. We're gonna pray. And we're gonna talk about the wasps downstairs. Dear God, thank you for this day, and thank you for these children and their questions and their comments and their stories and all of the knowledge they possess. Thank you for being there to hear our questions. Help us be patient to wait for the answer and to have faith in you, even on the very worst days like Mr. Potato Head had. We love you so much, God. Thank you for loving us, and the whole family said, amen. gets to talk about animals and free will and we're going to talk about Job. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad you get me. <laughs> oh, I think she was ignoring the peanut gallery. And that's okay. I have a couple of lessons for you, kind of to set the scene. Um, we're starting with Job, um, first chapter, and Job will go uh, just verses 1 through 12 to kind of to set the scene, and then we'll pick up in chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. <clears throat> Hear this word given to us. I'm sharing from the New Revised Standard Version. And this is under the heading, Job and his family. 
and then an attack on Job's character. There was once a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. There were born to him seven sons and three daughters. He had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 donkeys, and very many servants, so that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. His sons used to go and hold feasts in one another's houses in turn, and they would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And when the feast days had run their course, Job would send and sanctify them, and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This is what Job always did. One day, the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. Then Satan answered the Lord, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not put a fence around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. But stretch out your hand now and touch all that he has and he will curse you to, his fa to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well, all that he has is in your power. Only do not stretch out your hand against him. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. And then we jump ahead to verse 42. And y'all, there was a lot in between. Let me tell you. If you've been reading this week, you know all the stuff that was in between. Picking up at verse 42, this is right after all of the conversations with Job and his friends, all of Job's laments and shouting out at God and all of his questions and God's response, now under the heading, Job is humbled and satisfied. Then Job answered the Lord, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered what I didn't understand, things too wonderful me which I did not wonderful for me which I did not know. Hear, and I will speak. I will question you, and you declare to me. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. And under the heading, Job's friends are humiliated. After the Lord had spoken these words to Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against you and against your two friends, for you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. Now, therefore, take seven bulls and seven rams and go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Job shall pray for you, and I will accept his prayer not to deal with you according to your folly. For you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has done. So Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shurite, and Zophar the Namathite went and did what the Lord had told them, and the Lord accepted Job's prayer. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Create in me a clean heart. 
O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts everywhere be acceptable in your sight. O oh, holy God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Friends, it has been a week. Amen? How was your week? Do any of you feel like Job? Any of you have a, a week like Job? Maybe, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll back that up. Um, have any of you ever felt like Job? Yeah? Because in first service, I, I had, saw a couple people kind of move their heads, but no one, no one was raising their hand. And I was like, Pastor, you see this? I made sure Jason saw that no one raised their hand. Got to get a careful, careful record of that. So have you ever heard the phrase, oh, they have the patience of Job? Have you ever heard that phrase? Have you ever said that phrase? All right, we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. Now, one week ago, I stood up here and I reminded us all. Ooh, did you hear that? It was, it was a little rumbly. Was I getting too close? Maybe I'm getting too close to your microphone, maybe. Um, I stood up here and, and I reminded us all of Esther's courage. I called us all to tap into the reserves if we needed to so that we could step forward in faith. Little did I know that I was preaching to myself, too. Gosh, I hate it when I do that. Oh, um, it's been an amazing week for our faith family. Um, we have had some pretty awesome things happen um, in just in this week. Um, we voted to move forward with the Asbury Project, breathing new life into an old building and new ministry possibilities into a familiar and sacred space stepping out in big faith to grow more love in more ways. Hallelujah. That's awesome. And in this same week, some of us have gone to funerals to bid farewell to loved ones and friends. Some of us have celebrated retirements, and some of us have lost our jobs. Some of us are lamenting the end of relationships. And last night, I saw a Facebook post where someone had a picture of their steak dinner and champagne because they were celebrating the end of a relationship. Um, you know, whatever. <laughs> they were rejoicing in a new beginning. How's that? Um, some folks are celebrating milestones and others are skipping them altogether because, you know, but Job is, Job is another one of those books of our wisdom writings. And it has a much different flavor than Esther did, doesn't it? It's looking at the same questions. It's looking at um, God's presence. It's pointing at some of the same probe, and it's probing some of those same themes. But it comes at it from a very different point of view. Now, we often will think of Job and think of that really good attribute of, of patience. You've heard the saying, oh, you know, Sheila, she's got the patience of Job. Um, I could never go through all that. Well, friends, I got to tell you, um, Job has way, way more than patience, way more than patience. What he goes through is a marathon of pain and suffering and loss and heartache that no human should ever have to endure. That ain't patience. Pardon my language. The English major in me just cringed a little bit. But seriously, it's not patience. It's so much more. Now, I have not reached, and I know that you're going to be shocked by this, I have not reached the level of maturity in my faith, or otherwise, where I can read through the book of Job and not get righteously indignant on Job's behalf. Can any of you, I'm, I'm looking to, to my, my faith parents here, can any of you get through Job without 
And without feeling some of that, any of you? The Cameron Good Company. I, I do. I get righteously indignant on his behalf. Now, when I was younger, I would get mad at God for letting this stuff happen to him. It, it felt like he was engaging in this contest with Satan, right? It's like they were taking bets. We don't do that. Come on, God. Why, why, why would you do that? He's faithful. That's not how God acts. Any of you feel that way? It's okay. I, I would get mad when I would read that. And then sometimes I would direct my anger at Job's buddies as they, as they, at first they were good. They just sat with him in it. But then they started picking and poking and making the accusations. These were his closest friends. They knew his heart. They knew he was blameless. Come on, guys. Seriously? He would rest. And other times, I would get mad at Job. It, it, it almost feels like victim blaming, I know. But I would get mad at Job for his long and whiny prayers. Come on, this is over a chapter, dude. But then I would quickly realize that sometimes my prayers probably sound like this. And maybe God is saying, come on, dude, this is over a chapter. Anyone see themselves in that? Okay. I would realize that mine sound like that, and I'm nowhere nearly as righteous as Job was. And then I would put in my, my literary imagination, and I would, I would put it to work, and I would think about all the parallels to life and faith and, and, and modern mo modern times and, and friendship and, and how we blame God for things and how we blame things. The devil made me do it, blah, blah, blah. And how, how the story really hasn't changed through the years, how we blame fate um, and how we're not supposed to blame and how the story comes together. Um, so this time around, I was like, all right, I'm going to read Job like I've never, never heard of it before. I'm going to try to wipe the slate clean and, and go into it like I've never heard the story. Well, this time I remarked to a few friends that I found it incredibly ironic that we preached on Esther's courage on Sunday. And then we opened up the book of Job on a day when my annual conference, and, and y'all have to need, you, you need to know this, um, your church membership is here. This, this is your church family, right? And I love you, and I feel definitely a part of this family, but my church membership as a pastor gets put in the annual conference. So the West Ohio Conference is where my church membership is. And so on Tuesday, when we started reading Job, on Tuesday, my church decided that they were going to cancel all of summer camp. <sighs> Grr. Grr. Uh, if you know me, you know that this is a very, very... <sighs> it's a devastating move for young people across our state. And it is a heartbreaking move for alumni and friends of our West Ohio camps. Due to a number of reasons, they canceled camp. And I felt that blow to this ministry and mission in my very core. My soul aches. It's like I can't catch my breath. I have fielded hundreds of phone calls and texts and messages from kids and parents and pastors from all over our conference asking how to save camps, lamenting, yelling, threatening, um, all over the spectrum. Because, you know, we all do different things when we're upset, right? And I suspect that everyone got in touch with their inner Job. 
in some way in this past week. And yet it's been a blessed week as well. We had a record showing at our church conference last Sunday. I never seen so many of you all come to a church conference. I was pretty proud of you. We made solid progress on year-end paperwork. Yes. I turned in one of my papers for my demon this week. Yes. Bruno, our very sick, sick puppy, um, made it up the stairs twice this week to cuddle with his kids. That's awesome. That dude hasn't been up the stairs since Thanksgiving. Ouch. Um, the sun shined twice, three times if you count today. And it shined yesterday when the baseball team had their car wash to raise money for the Ronald McDonald House. How awesome is that? <clears throat> I got an encouraging text from someone who had no idea the firestorm that my conference had started. We had good surgeries, good test results. I got a phone call from a beloved friend who heard the news and wanted to check on my heart. Friends, it was a good week. Just like Mr. Potato Head was still Mr. Potato Head no matter what happened to him. It was still a good week in spite of the firestorm. I needed to remind myself of all the blessings. Because every moment that I thought I couldn't take another step forward, I thought of our brother Job and all that he endured. Through no fault of his own, through no sin of his own. And I remembered that his faith remained intact. His trust in God, immaculate. His iron will, his determination to keep the faith, to understand what God was up to, to remain committed to God no matter the circumstances, no matter what his friends, his ridiculous friends were saying. said the Lord gives and the Lord takes away blessed be the name of the Lord and y'all I think that we all think that we'd like that we are that mature in the faith but I'm not so sure that we are now we also if you've been reading along with us you also read um, Job's righteous anger and his questioning I've been so faithful I'm doing these things I have searched myself come on God what's going on here why aren't you listening to me? Um, and it's justified from a human standpoint, isn't it? Right? We feel it. We feel him. I am with you, brother. I feel you. You remember when he cursed the day he was born? He even asked God to blot out the day he was conceived. Um, we all get a little melodramatic sometimes, don't we? All of this is to say that God can handle our anger. God, God gave us this amazing heart that can feel amazing things. And God can deal with those white-hot emotions, no matter how big they get, because God created them. He crafted us. He gave us these big emotions, so certainly God can handle being the target of them. And so in all that befell Job, his faith, never wavered. His trust was steadfast. And friends, that's what we're talking about. We have to have the courage to have that kind of faith, to have that kind of trust, to have that kind of integrity, to have that kind of perseverance. So it all comes together. We don't have to have a day like Job's. We don't have to have a life like Job's. We do need to have the courage to have those characteristics that Job had. To have that integrity, to have that faith, to have that perseverance. To have it all in the face of all those things, I, I think I would never comprehend it in this lifetime. And it's got me thinking about what my threshold might be. 
Do you ever have those kinds of thoughts? When I read about the martyrs, when I read about the saints, when I think about Paul and all that he went through, when I think about the disciples and all that they went through after Jesus had gone, and I saw all those memes, you've seen them, I'm sure, if you're on social media at all. You know, the disciples had the very best pastor. They had the very best teacher, and they all, they hit the road at first. But then they came back. Judas had the very best teacher and the very best pastor, and look what happened to him. You've, you've, maybe you've seen them, maybe you haven't. But they had this enduring faith. The disciples, the martyrs, Job. I'm wondering what my breaking point is. I'm wondering what my threshold is. And as I think about what Job endured, I've seen, I'm not sure what, what my, how robust my faith is sometimes. I sat through meetings this week and, and listened to folks making really big decisions that impact and have ripples. And I thought, mm, I don't know about this. I don't know. I don't know. God, God's at work. What is God doing? What is God birthing? What is happening here? And, and I dug up something that I had written the last time that I, I think it was the last time that I read Job through. Um, I'm not sure what my threshold is for all of this loss, but I'm so thankful for God's grace and even more so for his mercy. That was the note that I had written in my journal. And I wrote a poem. Um, It's not really a poem, but it's kind of a poem because I was a writer, so I have liberty to call something a poem, even if it's not. Um, So hear this. Oh, Job, I feel you, brother. I'm not as righteous as you. I would not. I would have lasted when I lost my property. I could have lasted when I lost my livelihood. And although I should have, I don't think I could have. I think I would have been done in when the tornado came. Satan would not have had a chance to take another swing at me because I would have already been down for the count. I'm not as righteous as you. I'm not as faithful as you. God, forgive me and please Please, please build in me that kind of faith. Oh, Job, to have your enduring faith. So friends, what we have is permission. We have permission to ask the questions, to have the doubts, to push back to dig deeper, to find that courage so that we can build this enduring faith. It's no accident that last week we looked at courage and we were reminded to dig deeper. We were reminded to have a courage for such a time as this. It's no accident that we have Job in front of us today for whatever it is that we're going through. It gives us perspective, but it also reminds us to have this enduring faith, to trust in God, to be known for that commitment to God, that integrity, to persevere in spite of what seems to keep happening to those obstacles that keep getting thrown in our path. To be humble enough to know that it's God who gets us through this. It's God who gets us through it. Job was all of these things. He gave us this example of what enduring faith can be for us, can get us through. And if you kept reading, we heard Job's answer to God, how he was humbled and he was satisfied. But if you kept reading, you would hear how God restored Job. He restored all the things that were lost. He again received his property. 
he again, actually it was even more so, his, his fortune was restored twofold. His animals, his servants, his property. He even had more children. And then he had grandchildren. And he lived to a ripe old age. He was able to bounce the grandbabies on his knee before he died. His enduring faith is that legacy and helps us to see what can happen when we dig in. Let's pray. God, it is hard. It is so hard. When we ask the hard questions and the world gives us answers that aren't necessarily the ones that you would give, help us to have the patience to wait for your answer. Help us to have the integrity to stay faithful. Help us to have the perseverance and the courage to keep our faces turned toward you. Help us, Lord, to have that enduring faith. Lord, we love you. Thank you for not deserting us. Amen. Friends, you're invited to stand again as we respond through song as we continue to worship.
Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Christ is my firm foundation. still got joy in chaos I've got peace that makes no sense so I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength cause I built my life on Jesus He's never let me down He's faithful He won't, he won't fail, he won't fail, he won't, he won't. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand, with everything around me is shaking. I've never been more firm. I put my faith in Jesus. Seas never let me down.
I'm going to make it through Cause I'm standing strong on you I'm going to make it through Cause my house is built on you Christ is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaken I've never been more glad I put my faith in Jesus Cause he's never let me down He's faithful through generations So why would he fail now? He won't He won't, he won't fail, he won't fail, he won't, he won't, he won't fail, he won't fail. to the world, go forth out into this world knowing that we are blessed beyond our wildest imaginations. And sometimes we forget that. Sometimes it feels like the world is crushing in on us and we forget that. So as we endure the marathon literally for some of you. I think next weekend's the marathon, right? <laughs> As we endure the, the pain and the sorrow that this world brings, know in your bones that it doesn't have the final say. That God is with us. That God's grace and God's mercy covers us, holds us, heals us, lifts us up. So go forth out into the world and share that good news it doesn't have the final say. Go forth in the name of the one who made you, the one who saved you, and the one who sustained you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Amen.